say thank you all. I know this has been a long day with a lot of great stuff, and I promise that this will be a fun and exciting session. And by the end of today, you will have built, maybe for some of you, your first Rube Goldberg machine, so it should be exciting. Today I'm going to tell you about how to inspire your students to invent the future with Rube Goldberg machines. And I'll do that first of all by talking about Rube Goldberg, and then also go through some examples of stuff that I've done in different education settings. So first of all, who am I? He mentioned a few things. Um, I'm a professor at Arizona State University. I direct the Steam Lab Center for K-12 Research and Engagement, which in particular uses lots of chain reaction style, uh, project-based, maker-based, uh, soon hackathon-based pedagogies to get students excited about engineering and design. I'm a maker and an engineer, so I obviously make uh, Rube Goldberg machines. I'm an electrical engineer by training, and uh, I don't let that limit me. <laughs> I, um, I am uh, at Rube Goldberg, and then I'll show you actually a video from one of my Jimmy Kimmel appearances a few years ago. So we'll start off by talking about Rube Goldberg and some of his cartoons and the role that he's had in pop culture. And then I want to tell you about how to use chain reactions to tell stories and how those, that storytelling can actually help connect across cultures and really make a difference with underrepresented students. Then we'll go through some ideas on how this might impact your students, and then we will do an activity where we actually build a human Rube Goldberg machine that involves all of you in the room. And then finally, we will go and build physical machines with a specially curated kit that are, um, and to break into teams in the lobby, which will be a ton of fun. So that's, that's what we have on tap. First of all, Rube Goldberg, the man. Now this is kind of a summary of what Rube Goldberg represents and who he was in society. So you start out, let's say, with a ball rolling down a ramp, maybe striking a match, which then ignites a rocket, which then could turn figures, which then could turn an arrow, which then could tip a watering can, which eventually waters a plant. So Rube Goldberg is about completing a simple task in an overly comedic but complex way. And he's actually a, an adjective in the dictionary, you might have heard this used in many different contexts from describing healthcare to government <coughs> to public school funding situations. <laughs> This is an example of one of his cartoons. Uh, it's an automatic dishwasher. And you can see in particular that there's a whole series of steps that are labeled A, B, C. So it's all cause and effect, which is another great connection, particularly for elementary and middle school kids when you're trying to get them to understand linear sequences and cause and effect. Also, one interesting note is he actually never built any of these machines. He was an engineer. Uh, he designed sewers for six months for the city of San Francisco, and then decided that that job stank, and moved on to, uh, to cartooning, where he really found his passions and, to be, and won the Pulitzer Prize for his work. And as such, he's become a major pop, part of pop culture. And the number of slides I could show on his pop culture references would take up this entire hour. But this is an example. If you haven't seen this video from a few years ago, the OK Go music video, I highly recommend checking it out. It is a Rube Goldberg machine in its finest form. And so it's actually a music video. Now, this is something that you think might, how many of you, anyone compete in Rube Goldberg contests at your schools? Every hand should be raised right now. <laughs> so if you haven't, I highly recommend, please check out RubeGoldberg.com. There are a number of different ways that your schools can get involved. Uh, we've got elementary, middle, and high school and college competitions that are all, uh, that are international. And they're both online and face-to-face -face versions of those. They're a lot of fun. Uh, every year there is a task that is defined that all teams will complete, but then they can come up with their own solutions to those machines. So as an example, the competition that's wrapping up right now, all of the machines uh, around the world that are competing in it completed the task of opening an umbrella, which is, there's some pretty impressive stuff. There are a lot of videos on the website, too. Definitely check it out. So I promise, back when I was in college, I uh, competed pretty heavily in Rube Goldberg. And for me, as an electrical engineer, I saw it as a way to scratch my maker itch. 
because, and this was before maker fairs existed and such, but for, for me it was something where I can work with people across disciplines, I can actually physically build stuff instead of just derive the equations behind it, and I can have fun and, and be creative. And so this is an example of one of my machines that I built that helped the Guinness World Record. Uh, these gentlemen that are team from Purdue University won the prestigious 18th annual Rube Goldberg Machine Contest in West Lafayette, Indiana. If you don't know what it is, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. You're in for a treat. Please tell to a couple of guys who are almost as bright as the shirts they're wearing. Uh, Sean, Sean Jordan and Kevin Holland were there, the team captains. <laughs> to start exploring the intersection between Navajo culture and engineering design in the context of chain reaction machines. This is through a program called STEAM Machines, where STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. And you've heard about that through some of the other speakers earlier today. 
And the idea is that we're connecting together all these different concepts. So this is an example design sketch that a team made. And you can see uh, they, they could have, for instance, laid out the physics, but they definitely laid out the different steps in sequence. Technology, we use lots of Lego robotics, but we also tend to use just basic electrical circuits, motors and Arduino and other, other devices of that nature to get codes, kids exposed to computational thinking in the context of cause and effect as opposed to computational thinking with, oh, here's a robot going across, across the, the stage or across the machine. This is all based in the engineering design process. And as an engineer, one thing I love about the design process is you can attack many, many different problems in society and solve them using a structured design process. And yes, I'm from the engineering world, so of course I'd say that, but it really is true. And part of my foundational interest in engineering and kids is to help empower kids to solve problems that they care about. And design, a structured design process is one way to do that. Arts through storytelling. So we actually have kids lay out storyboards for their devices, as well as written stories, and then convert that into a sketch of the physical pieces that they're going to put together into their machines to make them work. And then finally, we definitely integrated math in terms of reliability and probability. Now, how many of you, any math, math teachers, people have taught math in the past? OK, so if you, how, how many of you have taught probability? How many of you taught it in the context of gambling and pulling balls out of a, a hat? <laughs> Things that, that, that gambling shouldn't hopefully be relevant to the kids and pulling balls out of a hat may, may or may not be, be, um, be appealing. Something I love about chain reaction machines is that because you have a linear sequence, you can have kids do repeated trials on individual steps in their machines and then multiply those together to get the overall reliability of the machine. And suddenly it becomes a very clear mathematical story for, let's say that you have six parts to the machine, five of them work perfectly and one team hasn't done their job and it only works 20% of the time. The reliability of the whole machine is 20% because of that one step. And suddenly the kids start to feel some peer pressure as well and see what, what their reliability affects with the rest of the machine and the rest of the uh, overall. Now, for me, again, this is about connecting steam and culture. And this is a photo from uh, one of the camps that I've done on the Navajo Nation. And here, the challenge is to ask students to write a story about related to their culture. So uh, I'll show you an example shortly. But then also come up with a task that is something that they might do at home on a regular basis. One of my camps um, was done at the Shanto Preparatory School on the Navajo Nation, and they came up with the task of watering a plant in that part of the reservation. Many uh, of the students will go and do farming, and so they thought that this was a this was a task that they chose that was fun. And then they chose a story of city boy visits the reservation. I don't think that was me, but uh, <laughs> so I'll show you this video. Um, all, all the parts in between. 
They wrote the story before they, wrote, they developed the machine. So they actually designed the machine to tell the story. Now this serves a couple of different useful purposes. So one, it allows them to connect their culture to engineering. One of the, <clears throat> one of the students who I talked to in this camp came up to me at the end and was like, Professor Jordan, Professor Jordan, this is so neat because I helped my dad, I helped my dad a few weeks ago wire a light switch in our house. And I didn't really know what I was doing. He just told me, put, put this screw in here and attach this here. And now I understand the circuit. Of, and I can actually draw the circuit of what that light switch is doing and how it's turning on the light. And so for, the, for him, it was one of the first times that, that he had seen connections between the things that he's already doing at home and the theory that he is learning in school. And to me, that is what this is about, of connecting all of these pieces together. Another way to integrate culture is not only through having them write a story, but it also could be a way to teach about a culture. So let's say that you design a unit that embeds culture and engineering, or a culture and math, or culture and science together, it's culture and technology, and then you can learn about a different culture. One variation of this camp that we've done is actually having students do virtual teaming, where there are multiple teams in different locations. Uh, we had one go between Trinidad uh, and Tobago and, the, uh, and Purdue. And there, we actually had them swap their stories and designs across the two sites. So not only was it an experience of engineering, but it was also about learning the, about another culture, which was a lot of fun. So as far as how to impact your students with this, my recommendation is that we really focus on developing culturally contextualized, project-based curriculum that inspires and empowers all students to invent the future in their communities. And if we do that, there are a number of possible impacts. So first, we can help students apply STEAM and to make a difference in their communities. And so that helps to redefine engineering in particular and some of these other uh, some of the other STEM fields as it moves it away, moves the fields away from being, oh, you're gonna go sit in a cubicle and work by yourself, to engineering is a helping profession. You are helping people through the designs that you make in many cases. And that is, is something that's important to society. It can also be a path for broadening pathways for underrepresented students in STEM, in particular by connecting culture into the curriculum in a, in a legitimate way. It can also help students develop both the creative competence to solve their problems as well as technical proficiency in using rapid prototyping tools. And that's something you see characteristic in both the maker movement as well as the hackathons that we've heard about earlier today, where those definitely link together. And then finally, we are able to engage students in real world problems that matter to them. One of the downsides to the testing regime that, uh, that we have headed toward more and more in schools is that schools or teacher, excuse me, uh, students are becoming disengaged because they don't see why does this problem that I'm doing matter. So I challenge us as educators to continue to try and help students in more open-ended ways solve problems that they care about. And then it's up to us to help them embed the theory into those lessons so that way they're learning the things that they need to report on the standardized tests. And if we do that, we can inspire a generation of STEM innovators. And one way to start that's fun and creative is with Rube Goldberg machines. Thank you very much. So we're going to start off and do a Ruth Goldberg machine activity. Do you want to do the activity? I just want to give you a quick oh, thank okay. you so much. Oh. Um, it's been great. And we're all so excited for your activity. Uh, here's a special hack in the box. Oh, okay. I'm looking over these at the end of the conference. Um, so yeah, awesome. Awesome. thank you very much. I appreciate it. are the things straight out of the curriculum that I use with the summer camps, and they're a ton of fun. And the first one is a human Rube Goldberg machine. Do we have anyone with an acting background ever taken an acting class? Okay, okay one, yeah, great, right. okay. So, so stay up, you get to the activity. <laughs> um, so, there's a, in, in acting classes, there's one of the common activities that you might do is 
can act it out of, a, of the different parts of a machine. And so you got this whole machine running. Now, we didn't want to do that here, but in the, instead of just an any old machine, we wanted to do a machine reaction machine. So I like each of you can sit down for now, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, we're going to go chain reaction machine. What I'd like you to do is take a minute and think of an everyday object that you can act out. So that could be a ball bouncing, that could be a simple monkey, that could be a domino, that could be a basketball player, that could be a car moving. And so come up with an object that you think you can, that you can act out. And remember, you can use both motion and sound. Where am I at objects? Pretty close. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is talk with the person to your right and the person to your left and figure out how your objects can interconnect in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> 